Hi, Eric again of Ion Software. In this little presentation I will give you a very short run through the new features in Fusion 614. Well, not all of the new features because there are so many and it basically comes with hundreds of fixes, but uh, some of the things that might be interesting for your workflow. So let's start with the uh, 3D space first and for example the duplicate 3D now comes with some new options. So for example what we have here is an option to influence the transform method. So it could be either set to accumulate which means that all the transforms, rotation, etc, etc put on top of each other or it could be set to linear which means all the transformations and rotations are put in one big matrix and only applied once to the entire queue of objects. You will also see the copy probability slider. So this is basically something like a random value that determines how big the probability is that a copy of any given object is created. You will also see buttons for the transform orders. So the default order is scale, rotate, transform. So first the object is scaled, then it's rotated, then it's transformed. You can also switch that to scale, transform, rotate, rotate, transform, scale, rotate, scale, transform, transform, scale, rotate, and transform, rotate, scale, which as you can see influences your scene differently because it's always different what happens first to an object before the next thing is applied. Let's add another duplicate 3D here, so we've got a little scene and view it through our camera. Let me actually switch this to a double viewport here. Another option is that you now have the possibility to pick XYZ coordinates as well as XYZ rotation. What does that mean? Well as you see here I'm viewing my original scene on a downstream tool here and on the left side I'm viewing another merge which has this shape 3D, this plane here coming in. So if I go to the plane's 3D controls, I can actually pick the position of the plane in the 3D viewport, as you can see on the left. Why well, not only that, I can also pick the rotation, which means it's very easy to orient my plane in this example to the rotation of any other object in the scene. So let's do that again. Let's say I want to align it up here on this point. And then I want to also match the rotation to the object underneath. So there you go, perfect lineup. And this not only is valid in the 3D viewport, but also in 3D rendered images. So in this case, I've got a 3D world pass or world point pass here. And that means, again, if you observe my shape on the left here, I can pick a position directly in my rendered world pass. I'll leave it up to your imagination what you can do with that in terms of uh, set extensions, modifying existing 3D scenes, adding elements, etc., etc., because that's such a versatile feature. Let's move on to particle systems here. As you can see here, I've got two particle systems set up and their output looks pretty similar. Well, the generation of the particles differs though. In the first case, I've got a standard particle emitter which has some velocity and drives the particles. Here I've got a particle emitter with no velocity at all, but I use a particle custom to introduce some speed, basically by adding a value of 0.01 to the x expression of each particle. So what happens, for example, if I switch on motion blur? Well, in this case, the particles are sampled eight times because I have a quality setting of eight here. With a normal particle emitter, that works just fine. But in my particle system that uses the p-custom here, you see streaks of little dots. And that is because the motion is sampled eight times and also is the equation here in my particle custom. A new value in 614 is delta. And that means if I just multiply my offset with delta, Fusion will do the correct computation on the speed and motion of my particles, including motion blur. Another new feature, it might seem small but it's quite versatile, is a new snap functionality. So in this case I'm working with a rather small background, 10 by 10 pixels, and I turned on the pixel grid to show you the benefits. 
I've got a mask here which is meant to be one pixel wide and one pixel high. When I move that mask around without snapping, you see it's quite hard to actually hit a single pixel only. Well, yes, there has been the snap function in Fusion for quite some time, but it defaulted to snap to pixel boundaries. So while this is fine to actually create masks like that, again, if you work on the single pixels, that's tedious. You can now switch the snap option to pixel center, which, as you might guess, means that the mask actually snaps, or any point of the mask snaps in the center of the pixel. And let's bring that back to pixel boundaries, and I can easily snap my size of the mask to the size of one pixel. Another new feature is how keyframes are handled. So in this case, I've got a very simple animation here. Let's look at that, switch to fit. And you could copy and paste keyframes in Fusion for many years now. However, if you copy them now and then paste them into the text editor of your choice. So you actually not only get an outline of how you could set up your own splines in scripting, but you also get all the keyframes, the time values, the actual values of the keys and the uh, handles here. And that also means that you can easily modify it either manually or by a script or by search and replace. And again, select all, copy it, and back in Fusion. Let's, let me get rid of these here. And back in Fusion, pay, paste points, values. And there you go with the new values we just modified in our text editor. Also, masks can now be cached to disk. Last but not least, a new behavior in our loader. So if I want to load a sequence, like this one, you will see that the open file dialog not only gives me the name, but also the length of the sequence and some missing frames. So this sequence is supposed to be 140 or 141 frames long, but there seem to be gaps in the sequence between 51 and 59 and 71 and 119. And the cool thing is if I hit F2, mark up these numbers here, copy them, and for example use them in my render manager, paste them in to set a new render range. So that's a very fast overview on the new features in Fusion 614. There's more, so make sure to read the release notes. Cheers and stay tuned.